First, the first thing we need to do when we're putting some components into a circuit is to identify or to transform these components into S space. What is the impedance in S space? And so we refer to our table of transforms. This, or if you've got your exam one, and we write down what ZS is as a transform. If we've got an inductor in series of resistor and then capacitor in series of, with a resistor. So I'll just pause for a sec while you just write down what those transforms, transforms are. No working involved, just write them down. So if we look at the first one and we look back at the transforms, a resistor. A resistor. Ooh. So a resistor of 10 ohms, just the transform just goes to R. So that will be 10 ohms. So the first one will be 10. And the inductor, according to our table, it just becomes the inductance times S. Second one, we know the resistance is 5, but what do we do about the capacitor? 1 over, yeah, 10S. What happens if we have components in parallel like that? Do you think we do? What do you think we do? Right, we have to use the parallel formula. So, let's see how we go about doing this. Well, we know we've got here a um, resistor. So, for the resistor, that would just be 5, and for the inductor, that would be 5S. So, in fact, we end up with ZS being the product of the two, which is 5 times 10, oops, 10S because that's the um, transform for the inductor, over 5 plus 10s. And then we might try and simplify that. We can multiply the 5 by the 10 to get 50. And I haven't avoided 5s, have I? Over 5 plus 10s. So we might do something like that. If we look at our transforms, here, we notice and we remember from last week that they all involve just S. There's no number in front of the S. So the first thing I want to do is try and get rid of the 10 that's in front of SS. So I divide by 10 to get rid of it. But that means I have to divide every term top and bottom by 10 to get rid of it. So ZS will equal 50 divided by 10 is 5 over 5 divided by 10 is 0 0.5 plus S. <coughs> so we can write circuits in parallel and series using Laplace transforms. We use the normal formula for resistors in series and parallel, but then we try and algebraically simplify to try and maybe get S on its own if we can. Here's another one. Write down what that transform will look like. Hopefully that. What we're going to do with these things is to apply them to Ohm's law. V equals IR, I equals V over R. And so we're going to end up trying to divide the voltage, which is similar to what we did last week, by this impedance. So we could do with this impedance being one fraction. 
So when you have something like this, what I want to do now is to try and convert them all into one fraction. So what do I mean by that? I mean, I want, if this is the denominator in this particular term here, if this is the denominator, I could do with that denominator being 0.5s and this denominator being 0.5s, so they're then all over 0.5s. Something else I might consider is I actually don't like that 0.5, so I could do with actually dividing top and bottom in that first fraction by 0.5 to get rid of that and leave myself with just s. And so let's start off by doing this. Let's just take this first fraction. Well, actually, if we think about it, if I double that, 0.5 times 2 is 1, so that'll give me 1s, so double top and bottom, so that's actually going to give me 2 over s plus 1.2s plus 3. And I've just got s on its own. Now I want to get them all over s. So what I do is I multiply top and bottom of this second term by s. I'm not changing the fraction. And I multiply top and bottom of this fraction by s. So they're all over s and then I can combine them. So I end up with 2 plus 1.2s squared plus 3s over s. So these are common tricks. If I have components in series like this, that's all well and good writing them like that, but then I often want to combine them together for one fraction. So that's a common trick with Laplace transforms. It's all down to algebra. Think back to the previous one where they're in parallel. Again, I fiddle around with it to try and get it to look more acceptable in terms of S, getting S on its own, in other words. And if we look back to here, our table of transforms, you can now see we've got things like s on its own, plus some term on the bottom. We've got an s squared now coming in, <coughs> and so on. Um, if you think back to what we're doing this morning in partial fractions, if we can change this to an x, that's not unlike we had x plus some number underneath. So we might end up with something that we can split into partial fractions and that will give us separate terms and so on. So some of the tools we've been using, we're going to start to apply to Laplace transforms. Okay. Um, one more.